Hey everybody, welcome back to New Videos channel and I hope you out there had some very relaxing holidays, not much drama, lovely time with the loved ones and uh, well, it's time for another video. So let's talk about why there is no composables folder in Nitro, like on the server side of Nux.js. Let's go. On this channel, we talked very often about the topic of composables in a view context. And even Nuxt has a composables folder out there, right? Where you should all put your composables that you only use top level in your single file components and so on, so on. There are a bunch of videos out there in the channel. And you might be aware of that if you're Nuxt or view developer. But if you ever used Nitro, no matter if with Nuxt or standalone, you also have seen some use things. And maybe the composable brain kicks in and is like, wait, different folder, only top level, but there are no single file components. And also there's no composables folder by default. So um, why, why is that? We'll check that out based on the demo application, roughly based on the uh, BFF code from another video before. But before talking about it and jumping into the demo application right away, let's talk a little bit about Vue.js Amsterdam, which is coming up in March. We have three amazing days together with JS World, full of, uh, well, a crazy good lineup, Evan Yu himself, Sebastian Chopin, Daniel Rowe, of course, Puya Parsa is also up there. Uh, a lot of people from the Vue ecosystem and also on JS World. Some people from the TC39 committee. Also, Sasha from State of JS will uh, come up and present the results. We have many more interesting people out there. Of course, I'll also join and, uh, well, hope uh, that if you're around, uh, let's have a chat. Let's talk a little bit. Of course, there's also a discount code on top of any sale. They're 10% off with the code Lichter. So feel free to grab that. Just click the link below if you maybe you can come and it would be great to see you in March. It's not that far away, actually. Should prepare my slides slowly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, nevertheless, let's uh, get back into the application. In the demo case, it's pretty simple. Let's say we have a button and uh, on click, this button is doing something with like an on click function. Click me. And of course, in that function, in that on click function, you should you can do a lot of things, but in here, you should never use something like use fetch, right? This is definitely no go. We talked in depth about it in the you are using fetch wrong. I hope you don't video. Uh, and if you haven't seen that, please check it out if you're using uh, Nuxt.js of you. Of course, you should call off these outside because, well, these are composable. So top level in here, use fetch, uh, call your API uh, or like your third party URLs and so on, so on. And then use whatever comes out of there like data uh, or also and have a refresh call if you want to. And otherwise, don't use a composable in your onclick. But if you say you submit a form, you should use dollar fetch. Uh, or any other fetching library you prefer. So far, this is nothing new. But if we now take a look at the server part of it, right, then we might wonder, okay, let's say I open utils users from the BFF code as mentioned before, and we straight away have something like use storage in here, right? Or maybe somewhere even something like use runtime config and so on, so on. And the big question is, yeah, why is that all mixed in a utils folder? And why is there no composables folder, even though we have the use prefix? Well. The point there is pretty simple. While on the browser, let's say in here, you have various contexts and the word context is really ambiguous, obviously. So we talk a lot about the view and Nuxt context, which means code is executed while, for example, the component is scaffolding and then we use certain parts that a composable can provide. So you can think of the composable as setting something up and whatever you destructure out here, you can then use. And this setup should always happen in the, well, script setup block or in obviously not a composable that is then also only executed in here. And that makes a lot of sense given that then view can control everything from like uh, tear down, build up all that reactivity as well. And you don't reinitialize that. You want to set it up once, then the reactivity is in place and then you can change things around. And of course, if you would do it on your on click, then this is not really in when the view context is there. This could be just like uh, an on click event through the browser itself. It's like some event you're reacting to. So we're out of the framework context and more just in the browser context. That's why like any JavaScript is fine. Now you can do a lot of stuff. You can use a fetching library, which is not related to interactivity at all. But how does it look in Nitro on the server side? Well, let's open um, an API endpoint, like API users info recent in server. And here we see we have a defined event handler. And in here, this is all Nitro land, right? So in here, this is all in the framework, let's say Nitro, H3, whatsoever context. Don't confuse this with the event context, which you can access with event.context 
which basically means everything that uh, was added or um, appended to the event while the request was ongoing. So let's say you have middleware and then say, okay, I want to initialize some error logging tool or I want to attach the, the session of the user. That's all in the context of the event, right? And yeah, sadly, the word context is a bit overloaded and depending on where you are, it can mean different things. It's very unfortunate, but that's uh, usually how it goes. We have lots of context to, uh, to think about, but think more like the space where your code is living, everything around it, obviously. So the code in your defined event handler and functions that are only be called there, that's in the Nitro context, in the H3 context, because the framework is handling all of that. Then you have, of course, the context of your request. So as I said before, what's added and so on and so on. And on the front end side, you have the context of the browser, obviously, sure, vanilla JavaScript and so on and so on. And when your framework is boot up like Vue and Nuxt, you can also do things in the Vue and Nuxt context, but also can write code there that lives after all the setup is done. And then on, for example, button click, it's once again only related to the browser context. So yeah, quite a few things, but let's jump back into it. Of course, you can even write something outside of this defined event handler and out here, you don't have any access to the event. So it's really contextless, so to say. Of course, we're still in the backend, so it's still that context, but it's not necessarily related to Nitro or similar, which is usually when you write a function out here, then you commonly say, okay, you know what? Uh, I have something like check permission from the last video where we uh, actually built a very nice wrapped event handler. Check definitely out if you enter Nitro. Then commonly you pass the event here, which is uh, H3 event, to make sure, okay, whenever you call this in here, you pass in the event. So, okay, check permissions and you pass in the event. Of course, let's quickly add the type and then we see uh, that this is what we need. And then you do something like, oh, okay, we have the event, we can say, I don't know, event.context.user, if we'd have a user and so on, so on, go through that. Um, but that's of course the way how to make these function context full by passing the event straight away. Now, there's even a way to do it more in a view style, so to say, by having an implicit context, because this one is pretty explicit, right? We say, we pass the event and that's that. What you could also do is, you could say const event equals use event. And yes, now we have this use prefix again. And we get access to the current Nitro request event. The only thing is it's experimental as it says here. And it's very important that it's also only working with async context because if async functionalities, the context can be lost similar as um, in the whole view and next part. So that's commonly while this is not advertised. You can still try it out. It's limited to a certain runtime, so it's worth looking into if you're interested in it. And ideally, at some point, it should just work flawlessly because then it is more like we do things in the front end to say, okay, look, we don't have to pass event everywhere. Like we don't pass, I don't know, current instance of view around. Please don't, don't do this. Or like the Nux tab everywhere around. We can just say like, okay, let's call this. It will be called. We don't have to chain uh, all the parameters necessarily. You can still do that, of course, but that's that's another thing. Coming back to the use part though, in here, use is a bit more like, I don't know, get current, right? So maybe also the naming uh, is not really similar to the front end part here. And we're also looking into how to make it easier and more accessible in terms of naming to not have a lot of confusing things. For example, we also have use runtime config, right? And use error and a lot of things there. Uh, or use request URL. But for example, if we take use runtime config, it's always a, a good case. This works more or less similar to what it also is doing on the front end, right? We want to have a way to access the runtime config. The implementation of that though is very, very different on the front and on the back end. Because on the front end, okay, so not in your Nitro part, then if it's on client side, easy. We have the public runtime config, which is available all somewhere in a global object. So just access this. Doing SSR, it works the same as only on Nitro because then the Nitro part kicks in there and will basically say, okay, resolve it. It's there based on the end variables. And we also have the private part available. You never heard of runtime config? Also talk a little bit about that. Check it out if you're interested in that. It's definitely a nice way to share uh, variables without rebuilding the whole time and just uh, setting things without baking them into your application. But nevertheless, this is one of the complex scenarios where, well, you, you have something, it's named the same way, it might work different, and it wouldn't also 
necessarily help to change the naming to say, okay, this is named differently on the server, on the client, but it's still doing the, the same thing, even though it works differently under the hood. And there's a whole bunch of things that we are looking into to improve this. There's also an open issue that I'm happily linking, so you're aware of that. But once again, we don't have any composable folder to answer the question because we don't have the separation of, let's say, the backend context only in the Nitro context. And in a way, that's pretty good because then we can mix a lot of things. And even with async operations, it's not a problem at all. The only downside is, though, then it's confusing, especially as a viewer, to say, like, oh, wait, I have this use storage here. This should be, like, in a composables folder and only called on the top level, but the top level of what? So in a way, everything of that is, let's say, quote-unquote, composable because they end up being called in a function in an event handler. So you don't even have the way, except you would just have like a full context class thing in a shared folder, for example, then fine, like util to, I don't know, format some text or whatnot, to not call in that context. Nevertheless, the whole context topic of Nitro, Vue, and Next is a bit tricky. I'm also planning to make another video on that as soon as there's some more advancements happening. It's a bit easier to talk about that. Uh, but this year, together with the Nuxt versus Nitro part, might make a bit more sense on why there is no composable folder and how context is working. Because we didn't even dive into async context, we briefly mentioned it, and a lot of people are not aware of that, but especially with async operations, it's really tricky to keep the context. Nevertheless, if you have any questions regarding the whole topic, I've more than sure there will be a lot of comments. I try to answer them all. Uh, of course, this video can't be like a, a full-fledged thing, but hopefully it gives you a good introduction of why there's no folder like that, what the composable term in the backend means, and also together with the last video, showing you how you can actually compose other functions, like also composing event handlers to make a composable backend thing. Let me know what you think, and uh, I hope you have still some enjoyable vacation, if you're still on, and uh, a great uh, new year. Of course, uh, check out the latest Deja View episode. We prepared some little specials for you there throughout the holiday, and uh, if you're still catching up, then check out the, the next video and the last one and all of them. And in any case, stay tuned and happy hacking.